still strong. Belmont is all that. The conference champions, baby, let's go! A walk-off home run over the left field wall. Check back in to Connolly Chin. Three, it's good. Hey, y'all. What is up, Bruins? This is Conley Chin from Belmont Women's Basketball, and this is our first episode of the Belmont Bruin podcast. Um, a couple days ago, or weeks ago, our media guys messaged me and asked me to get this podcast rolling, and being a podcast lover during these past couple months of quarantine, I jumped in immediately and uh to be honest i have no idea what i'm doing this is my first ever experience um i would say i love talking and i love to hear myself talk so i think this will be a pretty easy job for me um we'll see though there might be some times where you'll be like conley what in the world are you talking about but uh please just roll with me and bear with me uh but i can't explain to you guys enough like how excited I am and how much fun I think this is going to be. We have a lot of ideas and we expect this show to become a, a really fun thing and I, um, I think it's going to become my little baby so I'm really pumped about it. Um, a couple of things about me just so you guys can get the gist of who I am and why I'm so willing to do something like this. Uh, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi I grew up playing sports. I grew up in a house of four really athletic girls. Uh, I had three older sister, all of which played sports growing up. Basketball was a big one, of course, but we were all really close, but all pretty spaced out in age. And I think that really helped me grow up and like get mature pretty quickly and um, kind of have I would say a wide range of humor and I don't really know how to explain it, but like I was able to talk with my 20 year old sister. I was able to talk with my sister that was only five years older than me. So I would say I have like a pretty broad range of things I can talk about and things I can relate to. Um, I will say I'm very opinionated. So if I come off like very assertive and aggressive, I apologize. Uh, I can't help it. I just like to say what I think. Um, I'm also pretty girly. Um, yeah, I love to get my nails done. I giggle a lot. I like girly things. I love the color pink. Before this, after I downed a bagel, I uh, had to get my vanilla latte before this show because I run on vanilla lattes. Um, I'm also a chocolate addict, so Almost every single night, I am tempted on a run to Sonic to go get a blast or an Oreo blast, something like that. I'm kind of obsessed with sweets and chocolate. Um, but other than that, a little bit about me growing up, I went to a, a cute little private school in Jackson, Mississippi. I played sports growing up. Like I said, I watched my sisters play, and so... When it came to being my time in high school, I tried to show out. I wanted to be the best out of all of them. But granted, I know that I couldn't have done anything without my sisters. Um, they showed me how to work hard. They showed me how to like have fun, be someone that people loved and how to treat people. And all of them are doing great things today. And I like really attribute everything that I have now to them. I think watching them just like so gracefully go through high school and college and now in their careers um, has really shown me the kind of woman I want to be and the impact I want to have on the people around me. Um, my oldest sister is an interior designer and she is married to a great man. His name is Sam and they have the two most adorable children in this world that I would do anything for. Savannah is my little 10 year old niece and I post her all over my social media. She is at Belmont Games a couple times of the year and she manages to get in front of the camera. Like y'all, it's so funny. Like she'll show up to a game and then somehow be on the jumbo screen and 
on the like media stream and she uh was actually a uh paint girl she like wiped the paint whenever there was a timeout or something and she thought she was so cool because she got to wear a belmont t-shirt and everyone got to see her in the middle of the court and uh she is like i think the reason i exist i think i was placed on this earth to be her aunt um <laughs> love her with everything she's amazing and uh i'll probably talk about her a lot on this show just because she's full of good content um and then my nephew marshall he's her five-year-old little brother and he is just like the cutest little dorkiest little boy uh she like beats up on him and he's just such a softy it's adorable and I love them too so much as if I, y'all probably couldn't pick that up beforehand. Um, I have a sister, Casey, and she is about 28, 30, somewhere in that range. I can never remember. Um, but she is a general surgeon at um, Macon, Georgia, Mercer Hospital, I'm pretty sure. And she is like my idol. I look up to her. I want to do what she does. And that's something I could talk about forever, wanting to be a surgeon like her. And I have like wanted to do that ever since I was a kid. So being able to watch someone I was so close to go through it and like show me what med school looked like and residency, it's been really cool. And um, I kind of bug her all the time about what is it like or like, did, do you still use organic chemistry because it is kicking my butt right now or like right now I'm in physics and I ask her all the time like hey like how often do you use like force equals mass times acceleration she's like never I don't know I don't remember any of that uh, and then I have a sister Carly and she is in Ole Miss Law School right now and I would say her and I are the closest just because we're closest in age and uh, she's been awesome to me she's a really hard worker and she is also a yogi so that's something that no one else in my family has done we never really knew about it until like she came along and learned how to do all of it so that's just a little bit about my sisters and my niece and nephew and then i could also talk about my parents forever my parents are two very hardworking, loving people my mom is an interior designer so my sister kind of took, my older sister took that from her. And my mom, literally, she holds our family in, like on her shoulders, everything. She knows exactly what to do, how to do it. She knows what we need to hear, everything. And like, we wouldn't be able to do anything without that woman, y'all. So like, I... I mean, it's true what they say about moms. It is so true. And like, I didn't realize it until I got to college, just how like important mothers are and like the role they play in our lives. Uh, so if you haven't uh, thanked your mom yet today, go ahead and thank her. Um, <laughs> my dad is probably my best friend. He is a lawyer and he is, he is like my number one supporter, my biggest fan. And he, guys, I can't explain to you enough how much this man loves Belmont. This, <laughs> we didn't really know what Belmont was until I was being recruited in high school. But this man was seriously like, we should buy a red car to go with Belmont. Like that should be your college car. Like what you take to college with you. And he, like he will do anything for Belmont. Like I, if like Scott Corley or Bob Fisher, like were to say hello to this man, it would make his entire week. Uh, and he, he loves that I'm here like I do. Um, and we just have the absolute best time being here and being a part of what Belmont is and watching watching our teams grow, watching the school grow. Like, man, there's so much important things going on at Belmont's campus right now. Like we have a debate and like huge deal. We have two facilities being built, a beautiful, gorgeous performing arts center going up right now. We have um, a practice facility that's supposed to be built or it's being built right now. And it's gonna be due um, supposedly like next fall. And being able to have that my senior year, my last go around at Belmont is gonna be 
amazing and I cannot wait. Um, but now I'll tell y'all a little bit about why I picked Belmont. Um, I picked Belmont for a multitude of reasons, multitude, don't know how to speak. I picked Belmont for a multitude of reasons. Um, to be honest, I had no idea what Belmont was until sophomore year of high school. Um, I played a couple sports in high school. I played soccer. I played volleyball. I played or I ran track and um, basketball. Duh. I played basketball. And um, I really did not think I had a future in basketball. I loved volleyball and I loved high jump and track. And I thought those were what I was going to have a shot at in college until one day um, a coach from some university <laughs> thought I was a pretty good basketball player. And after that, like, it just got the ball rolling. I decided, hey, I, I can actually do this. I can actually like put forth effort into basketball. I can learn to be good at it and to like create a career out of it or a college career out of it. And so that's when my like college basketball recruiting journey began. And it was a pretty short journey for me. I just, um, <laughs> I, submitted a highlight film to a local AAU coach and he knew exactly where to send it. He knew exactly who to get me in contact with. And the first school to call me was Belmont. And at first he goes, so-and-so from Belmont University like wants to talk to you. And I went, what's Belmont? Because I thought that I needed to like get a call from like a big power five school. I was like, where's the Yukon? Like, where's the Maryland? I don't know, like all those big schools. I was like, what is a Belmont? <laughs> and um, I got on the phone with them and it was, it was the best phone call of my life. It was, it was so fun. It wasn't just asking me about basketball. They were asking me about me. And that was really special to me. I didn't know how college basketball recruiting went but the way that these coaches went about it like it it sold me on the first phone call and yes I did have to continue talking to other coaches just because like due diligence you gotta like play out your options but like the whole time I was like man no one has touched my heart like Belmont did like, there was just something so special about these people and then also here they're in Nashville, like, and I've never been to Nashville. So let's go see what Nashville is like. <laughs> and I came to Nashville one weekend in June and I was like, oh buddy, this is where I'm going. Like who does not want to live here for college? Uh, all of my older sisters went to Ole Miss and they were Kappa Deltas at Ole Miss. So like, I really thought that that was something I could potentially see myself doing um, but I couldn't imagine my life without sports. And whenever I saw Belmont and I met the girls on the team and like, don't get me started on those girls. Like they sold the school to me. They sold the experience to me, like just getting in the car with them to drive, to pick up dinner. I felt like I was already like family. And I felt like this was like, I was, I just like got emotional, honestly. Like I thought, man, this is what I get to have for four, now five years. And um, I got in the car after my visit and I said to my dad, like, can I just like commit? Cause I didn't know how this thing went. I had no idea how like college, college recruiting goes. And he was like, Conley, this is the first school you've seen. Like, you need to take a chill pill. Um, <laughs> so we went a couple months where I would just like continue talking to other people, but like never was I sold. I was never sold anywhere else, but, but Belmont. Like I knew in the back of my mind and like, I would ask my dad like weekly, like, can I commit? Can I commit? And he was like, no, you need to wait you need to wait a second. Not that he had anything bad against Belmont. He loved Belmont just as much as I did. But he also knew that, you know, you can't just, you know, grab the first thing you see. You have to 
test the waters a little bit. You have to ask around and see what other options there are out there. Um, but nothing, nothing ever touched me the way Belmont did. And so I ended up committing my junior year of high school. And I have, I feel like the second I told them, hey, like, I'm going to come here. Can I commit? Like, I'm committed. <laughs> like, that, from that second on, like, I was family. And the way these people have treated me is something that has like truly touched my heart. And I know I'm not the only person that feels this way. I know tons of people, just about every single person I meet on this campus can say the exact same thing. Um, I could go on forever about Belmont. So I'm just going to save it for the future episodes. But uh, right now I want to ask Christian and Daniel about why this podcast and why now what what sparked this interest and what do you guys see coming out of this what do y'all what do y'all want from this podcast and what do y'all want it to be Uh, i guess i'll start um basically i mean we were just looking for video ideas as a whole because with coronavirus with all that stuff with with there being no games we wanted uh something to give the athletes some type of uh, a voice as well so we thought a podcast would be good just because even though we don't have games even though we don't have a way to showcase our athletes talents and their voices that this podcast would be the next best best thing do you have anything to add Kristen? well i was just gonna say i wish i could co- say I, I came up with this idea i'm kind of beating myself up that i didn't this was all daniel um it was something i'm really proud of this group and honestly our athletic department staff um, really challenge us in different ways to be creative. Um, but more than that, really make sure our student athletes voices are heard. Um, that was one thing we really wanted to do, especially during this time is engage. And I, I got to say like first little part here and talk the con, they talk about like her and things like that. That's so cool. There's four or five different things. I had no idea. And you've been here for three years, right? Getting to hear more about y'all and your stories. That's always exciting because that's the best part of our job, right? Is you guys, y'all are great people um, and want to give you guys the space to be that, right? You're not just on the court. You're not on the course. You're not at tournaments all the time. You're not just playing games. You're more than that. Um, You have great personalities and great ideas. And I think this is a great platform for you guys just to do that, have fun with it, all that kind of stuff. Um, So just even me being an audience member, because that's truly what I am here even though I appreciate the spotlight, you know, I'm, I'm going to milk this for all it's worth, but um, no, really team, great team effort. Again, the department, the staff, um, really Scott Corley down challenging us. And then again, big props to Daniel coming up with this. And I appreciate all three of y'all being on here, um, being courageous and being on the very first episode, which is so going so great, by the way. Yeah, no, this is so exciting. Like, Whenever you texted me about this, Christian, I, for the past couple months, I've been telling my teammates and my best friends, like all about podcasts, because I think I'm such a, I think, I think I'm such a podcast junkie now. Um, Like, I think maybe it was just me, or maybe this has always been a thing, but I didn't really listen to any podcasts until quarantine started. And I feel like it you know, I think they've gotten like a lot more fame in the past couple months, like, because really, like, what else have people had to do, you know? Um, (laughs) But I've been listening to Crime Junkies. I've been listening to um, Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. I've been listening to the Joe Rogan experience. And there's a couple other podcasts, like from like Barstool Sports that I've been listening to and sport podcasts. And um, I don't know, just like podcasts in general have just been such a cool thing for me to like take interest in these past couple months, because it's really cool to I'll always learn stuff. But like, it's just cool that I never realized like how much I can relate to people like that you know I know nothing about that live all the way like in Boston I don't know like they have like just about the same thoughts and experiences as me and it's just 
it's funny that like we have found a way to entertain people by just talking you know I feel like in general like we watch tv we watch netflix we look at instagram like we look at things and now we're like listening to things and it's like taking our interest and it's something that i don't know the people around me like didn't really care about podcasts until recently and it's just so much fun now like to hey did you hear joe rogan's podcast with bob lazar like and that's something that I can like say to like a group of people and then bam, like we'll be able to talk about like conspiracy theories and things like that for like a solid like hour or so, you know, like it's just cool that this is something that people have gotten into. And I'd say this is a huge perk of like being a college student athlete is like being able to take part in things like this, like having the ability to start a podcast, do a talk show, like take fun videos and do things for marketing. Like it is something that is so exciting. So like, I thank you guys so much for asking me because like this, like whenever I was listening to podcasts, I was like, you know what? I should start one. Like people would love to listen to me talk, right? Like, like me and my teammates joke about this all the time. Like we should have a vlog, like we should, we should have a podcast and like call it like the Belmont girls. Like, I don't know, like just, it's just so much fun. And I like, I thank you guys a lot. And I think it's a great idea. And I hope it can become like our little baby that like, that grows and <laughs> we can, oh my gosh we can just like have a really good time with it and it can be something that like you said is a platform for students to use their voice and um with that I want to let you guys know we have two girls on the podcast with me here today uh perfect for the first podcast the pilot podcast we have Cameron Fish and Audrey Lyle we um it is mental health week this week and which is something I didn't even know about until I came to college and it started a conversation on students mental health but Audrey and Cameron are on the mental health committee with me and they have been basically the forerunners of this week and getting it organized and everything and I'm so glad I get to have them with me here today for the first ever episode. I thought what better way to get this going with student athletes, mental health, or just mental health in general. Um, Audrey is a junior from Cleveland, Ohio. She's a two year starter on the softball team and is also a softball SAC representative. She participates in FCA. She's a psychology major. I think I've had forensic psychology with her, a great class. Um, she is an elementary education, oh, she's an elementary, ugh, elementary education in Spanish double minor, because she, you know, she thought she might just learn some Spanish while she's here as well, uh, with all the other things she's doing. Um, and then Cameron, is 21 years old. She is a junior communications major, sport admin minor, and she's also the SAC representative for women's golf, and she takes part in FCA too. And she's from, guys, she's from Panama City Beach, Florida. Um, that's not a bad place to grow up. <laughs> um, but Anyways, I'm so excited to have them here. It's going to be a good time, and we have a lot we're going to talk about with mental health and being a student athlete.
Audrey and Cameron. Thank y'all so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having us. It's an honor to be on the first ever episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, um, so I've been on the mental health committee with you guys, and I've also had a couple of classes with y'all. Audrey, I had forensic psychology with you, which was like a really cool class. Uh, got to learn a lot about FBI and like interrogation tactics. It was like honestly one of the coolest classes I've ever had. And I know you liked it too a lot. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Karen, because it was an adjunct, so she's not here anymore, but. She isn't, but she was really cool, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. She was. Um, and then Cameron, I had interpersonal communication with you. Um, yeah. I'm not a communications major. I did think that it was a well core, bell core requirement, yeah. whatever you call it. Um, but in fact, it wasn't. It was a free elective. But <laughs> granted, it was like honestly one of the funnest classes I've ever taken just because it was literally about talking to people mm -hmm. and which is what we're doing now. Huh? How ironic. Use some of those interpersonal skills. Yeah. Just taking, like, I'm literally taking that class and running with it right now. Yeah, seriously. I think everybody should take that class. It is it's very helpful. It is cool. And I think it's cool that you're a communications major because literally you're majoring in how to communicate with people, which is something we do like all the time. Like, it's, yeah, I, it's, um, it's crazy how much I actually like use it on a day to day basis. I guess like that sounds a little duh. Like, I hope you're using what you're studying. Right, but, right, right. Like, I can just totally tell like a difference. Um, in the way I handle relationships, conversations with new people, or um, like presentations like this, it's it's a very helpful major, and um, I can't wait to see where it'll take me too. Yeah, no, that's so cool. Um, so Audrey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, let the let the people know who you are. Um, well, you did a good job introducing me. Um, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I'd say I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, um, but I really traveled all around the country when I was little. Um, my dad has always been involved in sports. He played in the NFL for 10 years, and he coached for a long time after that. And he's still coaching now. Um, and so with his job moving, we kind of had to um, – pick up and go around quite a bit, which actually helped me a lot coming to Belmont, um, transitioning to a new place. Um, but I grew up with my older sister, Haley. Um, she is a nurse down in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and she recently just got engaged too, which is awesome. Aww, congratulations to her. Yes. Um, I also was a multi-sport athlete growing up too, Conley. I played uh, volleyball and basketball too. I'm not nearly as good as basketball as you are, but oh, I, um, I'm not great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of just fell in love with softball um, and really pursued that. And um, I came to Belmont for a camp. And before I left, I had an offer on the table and I couldn't help but take it. Um, and I have just loved Belmont every moment I've been on campus and I'm so grateful for opportunities just like these that Belmont has given me so yeah no Audrey what uh what was it like having a dad in the NFL are you a Titans fan or are you his team <laughs> what team did he play for um he played for the Browns the Patriots the Jets and the Ravens um and it was basically whatever team he was coaching for which changed frequently as the NFL does um and that's the team we were fans for so I have just a bunch of different sweatshirts of different <laughs> different NFL teams um but right now he's down at Baylor um and he's working with them now he decided to transition to college um because he really wants to have an impact on the athletes that he's working with yeah and uh, he's really enjoying it down there and he actually is going to be um speaking at the mental health week that we've been planning um Monday and he's going to be talking about compartmentalizing and being able to be where you are. And I'm just so excited to be able to get him and his voice out to Belmont because he's one of the strongest men that I know and just an amazing um, man of faith as a role model that um, any person can look up to. So I'm really excited plugging him um, to speak. So. Oh, that's so cool. And I, I think that's really special that your dad, you know, like, I feel like when we think about a college coach or a football coach for that matter, we think of somebody that's just like, 
so intense and like, you know, like no regrets, no, what is the word I'm looking for? Excuses, no excuses kind of guy. Like, but that's not what your dad is all about. Like your dad is about like developing an athlete and like, and I'm excited to hear what he has to say too. I think he's going to do a great job. And I really want to talk about that as we get into mental health and a couple minutes here. But before we do that, I want us to hear a little bit about Cameron. Uh, okay. Cameron, uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'll kind of start from the beginning. Like Audrey did, I, I was born in Tennessee, um, but I don't remember a whole bunch of that. I moved to Panama City Beach when I was four, and that's where I stayed until I moved to college. Um, it, you were you hit it right on the nail. It's a great place to grow up being close to the beach, you know, my drives to middle school through high school, I was on Front Beach Road, you know, with the beach to my left. And so it was really cool and awesome just always being on the coast. Um, but moving to Nashville was also cool because I loved having the feel of like no end, you know, like around me because I'm so used to watching the sunset and going to the coast or the beach but for the sunsets here I have to like find a find a mountain oh I love mountains I love them um <laughs> so it's cool being like in a valley as I would say um but I'm an only child um but my parents are just amazing people like you're saying about yours um we're very dramatic and bold out there family I would say oh. and I think that that um, gets us through <laughs> just being us three because we all bring like so much to the table <laughs> um, like whenever we're just together and talking and so quarantine was fun um, <laughs> but I have only played golf my whole life I never really branched out into other sports I started really young um, I started like two or three my dad would go like to the golf course with his buddies and I'd be like I want to come and so I'd love to just sit on like ride in the golf cart with him and usually what like made me want to go was that there was like candy involved oh, and so yeah. my dad would always like get me like some candy and I'd ride around the court ride around the course in the yeah. golf cart that's like all a three-year-old once um but I kept just kept going with him and so he was like I'm gonna get you plastic clubs so I would just swing my plastic clubs in the house uh, in our backyard all the time and so um, after that, I was just kind of hooked and I got involved in camps, met some really um, cool other people that played golf and did lessons, started doing tournaments. And I liked it because I was good at it and I loved like meeting other people. And I think golf is a special sport with that because it's so individ individualistic that um, you have to make friends whenever you're out there with these people for like four hours. So um, my recruiting process was fun too. I, uh, my dad went to Belmont for like a second. He's a musician. And so he was like, check out Belmont. And I was like, no. And they were the first people to, um, because they were the first people to give me anything. And I was like, well, this is cool. But I, like you said, I want to go to a SEC school, but that's honestly, it wasn't a reality for me. And so happy I chose Belmont. Um, because it gives me the best like of both worlds with having like a social life and um, really focuses on academics but also it has the intensity of being a division one school for athletics and so it's a great mix and just for Belmont walking around or like me in general everybody you feel like everybody's at Belmont for a reason and like they were chosen to be here and and like, this is their place. They're so happy. So um, it's been a joyful journey. And um, yeah, that's a little about me. Oh, well, good. Uh, yeah, no, Cameron, when I was talking to you yesterday and I was saying like, we got to like make sure we can talk forever tomorrow. And you were like, no worries. Me and Audrey are talkers. And I was like, <laughs> good thing. Cause I am too. Uh, I know. <laughs> I was like, this this might be a long Zoom call. Like, I can't make this a little two hours or so, but um, no, but I, I mean, since I've been at Belmont, I feel like I've seen you guys everywhere. I think you guys are both like really involved. I've tried to be involved too, but like, I feel like any committee, y'all are on it. 
like I just feel like you guys are there and like and and uh, y'all have like invested so much into Belmont and and I think that like says a lot about you guys' character like how much y'all are willing to sacrifice your time to make Belmont a better place and being SAC reps I think like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I thoroughly enjoy being a SAC rep. Like, I know most of the time we're just like planning things, but for those times when like we have like a say in what goes on in the athletic department within our teams, amongst our teams, like, I think that's really special that like Belmont has, or like just schools in general are giving their athletes this platform to talk and to say like how they're feeling and like what they need to be better and how they want to take part in community and so I think both of you guys have done a really good job on that like I I just feel like you guys care and it, I feel like it's so easy to be an entitled athlete where we are privileged with many things like we're privileged with the ability to go to such an amazing school and to get gear and to like have like an army of people working for your benefit like all the people in the athletic department the goal of their job is to benefit us and so I think that you guys's um efforts and taking part and using your voices and helping as much as possible like I think that says so much about you guys's character and um, I thank you guys a lot for um, trying to make Belmont like such a such a great place I mean it already is but like you're just making it even better and you're helping with that and like what has it meant to you guys to to be a part of committees and to try to invest in Belmont like it has in you um, I would just say it's really rewarding. And because like you just said, going through the steps of preparing for an event or just being in community with the other SAC reps or just other athletes, um, it's just a great, it's been a great experience and just to be surrounded by awesome people. And I think that Belmont Athletics is super special because of the people behind the scenes like our faculty um like you just said they do everything like for us for our benefit and I mean how can you not want to give back to that or want to you know show them how appreciative you are of that so it's it's I would say it's rewarding and it's it just is an honor and you feel so special to be a part of such a great organization and community yeah I feel the exact same way. I feel like Belmont is such an easy place to care so much about because right. people care so much about you here. Um, and I think my experiences working in the athletic department and with the faculty have just made me into a better person and better athlete. Um, they've shown me what it's like to fail at something and not plan something the way, have something work out the way you planned it. And they've shown me how to be, have amazing successes in planning things and I think my main takeaway from being a part of Belmont Athletics as a whole is that it's just the more you pour into the people around you, the more you're going to get back. And Belmont certainly does that. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, I agree with both of you guys. And Audrey, like, what you were saying was Belmont like has been there for our failures and I think that's like the number one thing about being a college athlete or just in general transitioning to college. I think you experience quite a bit more failures than successes in your first year, three years now. But like, what, what do you think that says about like mental health or like, this is where I want to get into mental health. And cause you guys have been the forerunners of this mental health committee and making mental health week as special as it is this year. And, um, I think that as student athletes, like we, I, I know for me, like I didn't know the importance of mental health till I was a college student athlete until I started facing the failures that I did and the stress and the anxiety that I did. Um, so like what, like why are y'all so passionate about mental health and like what do y'all think that 
this conversation should be at Belmont around student athletes, mental health, and just athlete, I mean, athletes in general, students in general, like what does it mean to y'all? I think mental health is so important and it's, it's a shame that a lot of the time it gets overlooked. Um, since I've been at Belmont, my coaches have really integrated mental health into our, into our game. Um, softball is a game of failure. Sometimes it sucks. You <laughs> fail seven out of 10 times and you're a freaking all American. That's how softball works. And so you have to work with dealing with failure all the time. And that's something that's not easy because we're bred to want to succeed. Right. And especially as um, student athletes, that's kind of what we are made to do, right? We, we come here to this school to succeed and do well at our sport and in the classroom and outside of that. And it's hard when you can't always do your best. And I think that's where the mental health um, aspect of life comes in. And I think it's something that I've had to explore recently too, Conley. I wasn't really big into mental health before I came to college. And I think now that it's so important, um, I see so many people working through big issues and um, big life things that they can't handle themselves. And we have an amazing counseling services department here at Belmont, like people that just care and want to help. And being a psych major too, um, knowing how the brain works and how literal diseases of mental health change the brain structure and how people need help to get through those things. I, I just wanted to um, really pour into this week to give people as many resources as possible because I know that people are struggling through things right now with COVID and with being in quarantine and feeling alone. And it's hard to deal with those things. And I think that the more that we can give to people, um, the more Belmont is going to thrive as a community and the more people are going to um, give back to Belmont as well. And I think I've just had such a fun time working with Cameron and you, Conley, and Ryan on this um, in the athletic department. And um, I'm really excited to see how it goes. So. Yeah, Audrey, I'm a psych major too. And I didn't, I mean, I, you know, I feel like psychology has been a lot of like, well, duh moments, like when talking about like, yeah, thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many well, duh moments, but like when we started talking about in my personality psychology class last year, we talked about different mental illnesses and mm -hmm. um, psychological disorders, diseases. And it kind of occurred to me, it was a well duh moment. Like we can't control half of the stuff. Like this is like strictly like how our chemical makeup and like there are things like our brain literally tricks us into believing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like realize that until I was a psychology major. And I was like, wow, there yeah. like, this isn't just a suck it up and get over it kind of thing. Like this is a chemical imbalance. Like this is something that is real to me. Like this is a, this is real. Like it's not just something I can just snap my fingers and forget about. Like it's something that eats away at me. And it's exactly. something that um, and it's cool that like we have to like it's like a muscle like we hear all the time like your brain is a muscle just like your arms and your legs you lift weights for those to make them better like you have to train your brain to make it healthier and learn how to like you can't necessarily like control it but like learn how to adapt to it and learn how to combat the the struggles that sometimes Exactly. Even in my class that I'm in right now, um, I'm in a physiological psych class. And this past week, we talked about social relationships and how our brain is literally wired to release a certain chemical when we're in social relationships mm -hmm. that strengthen those bonds. Like literally, the actual molecular structure in your brain changes how you interact with people. So like even people that don't have any underlying mental health issues, literally just having a conversation, even via Zoom, oxytocin is getting released in my brain and it's <laughs> impacting our relationship. You yeah, know? Oh, it's crazy. Like that. It's just crazy to think about. And those things are important. Right. And social bonds are so important. Like we've been all been talking about at Belmont, those social bonds are so important. Um, and Cameron, you're literally a social bond uh, major. 
<laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, whenever you guys were talking about your psych things, I was like, I can totally tell how calm works with this. Like oh. it's the same sort of thing, just in a different like way you're it, like describing it and learning about it. I would also mm -hmm. say that everybody deals with things and processes things and goes about mental health and the way they check in on themselves so different. And so it's all so different. So I think that that's another really big, important reason why we need to bring up big topics to Belmont or just in general, like mental health, because, you know, you can have friends that give you advice and great advice, but it might be all the same. And you're like, that just doesn't work for me. Like I need something to help me or somebody to tell me something else or give me different resources, but they don't know how to. So I think that with mental health week too, it'll be awesome to, um, have those people who won't necessarily get up and go see a counselor or get up and ask for that help to have different resources to um, make their life better and get them through a tough time maybe, but. Yeah, Cameron, how do you think like being a communi communications major has like benefited you in learning about mental health and like helped you like develop your platform? Cause I know like you're really passionate about mental health too. So like, does being a communications major, has like that had any role in it? Or is there a reason you're a communications major that like has to do with mental health? Like, tell me about it. Yeah. Um, I think communications and mental health go hand in hand with just how to, this is just going to sound so basic, go for but it. just how to talk to somebody and get them through some, something or like, um, show them different ways to like help them get better because like I was talking about earlier everybody's so different and so the way I talk to myself or talk to my best friend might not be the way that I need to talk to another friend or another person and I think that's so important when dealing with um, like talking with people like that because you could like it's really important to recognize recognize that because you could be you know adding more fire to fire whenever you're you know being very stern um to one person whenever they're like this is just making it worse and you don't know that you know so it's important to like take a step back and kind of look from the outside and be like just because this is not the way I would handle it doesn't mean like that's not how they would and so just learning you know like putting yourself in their shoes or just understanding a different way to get your point across to a person is really important. I think that um, through my classes with communications that has shown me um, how to do that with friends and other people in my life. Yeah. Um, and that's something I've like had to learn too. It's just like how to talk to people because not until like I realized like how I wanted people to talk to me and granted like I don't expect everyone to know like oh Conley really struggles with this like I shouldn't bring it up like they're not gonna know that and like I can't greet everyone with hi I'm really insecure about this like <laughs> yeah. I exactly. and, like, yeah I just I think it's special that we're learning uh and it's like a conversation that mm -hmm there are some things like there are ways to approach people and there are ways like there are people respond differently mm -hmm. and I don't know I feel like growing up I like didn't really know about that I didn't know that people think differently like what like because yeah. it's hard to yeah. like take yourself out of like your shoes and see how other people would see a certain situation because it can be clear as day in your head. Like right. this is exactly how you should handle this, or this is exactly what you should do, or you should reach out to these people or something, but in their head, and this also can go with like psychology too, like in their head, that just doesn't make sense or that is just not how it works. And so also learning to understand and learning how to accept that it's going to take them more time to realize what you've known, what they need to do or what to do for so long is a big part of um, communications, talking to people, psychology and, and mental health, because some people just, whenever they're struggling with something, just sometimes time is the best healer and just continuing to be there for that person and, um, you know, not putting a time limit on that is really important. 
I think it's so hard for people to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so hard to admit that you have faults and that you're not perfect. Um, I struggle with that too. I try and handle things myself until I can't handle them anymore. And I think that mental health week is so important because it gives those people that feel uncomfortable reaching out for help resources in that they hear about things that counseling services are doing. They can check in with these amazing speakers that we have this week. And um, one thing that counseling services is doing is um, let's talk sessions that they're having specifically for student athletes and for everybody in general, um, which I think will be so important um, to give people a chance to drop in and talk to somebody that's licensed to talk to them about things. And um, those resources that we're putting out are so important, especially for those people that are too scared to ask for help. Yeah. Um, I think this is a really good time to take a quick little water break. And then when we come back, I really want to talk about specifically this mental health week and what we expect out of it. So now that we're back, uh, Mental Health Week, I feel, I feel like this year it has been the most important it has ever been in the past. And you guys have, like I've said, have had so much to do with that. And what do you guys hope are the takeaways from this week? And like, why are you so passionate about this week? What, what do you think student athletes, what do you think what do you think is most important for them to take away? I really just hope that they can take away like just a new mindset and just new things um, and how they will handle certain situations, um, find new resources um, and just get involved because the quarantine was difficult for a lot of people, I think. And I think it might've created bad habits and so something like this mental health week talking about it bringing it up bringing up the dirty laundry you know like let's talk about really what's going on and i hope that it can just make them become more vulnerable with themselves and that they can just have a new mindset about maybe an issue that they didn't realize they had or um, an issue that they've been dealing with for a long time Um, And if there are no issues like that, you're feeling great, then, you know, more resources to give to other people or just to stay on that track. Because in the words of High School Musical, (laughs) we are all in this together. So I don't think anybody anybody deserves to be alone in that. And I hope that they can also take out that they're not alone um, at Belmont with Belmont Athletics with their fellow student athletes, fellow classmates. I think um, Cam did a great job of of basically putting it into a nutshell, but we tried to create this week where there would be something for everybody. Um, So our main like five topics that we're focusing on are um, sharing stories, anxiety and depression, um, self-love and compassion, coping with COVID and mindfulness. Um, And I think that these things are so important. Um, Depression, anxiety are at record rates in our country, in our world. Um, Sharing our stories is not easy. It's not easy to be vulnerable with people. And um, I think that's really important to push out to people that 
it's important to connect even more now than ever um, because we can't see each other as much face to face. And even when we do, I can't see when someone's smiling at me um, because they have their mask on. So being able to connect on a deeper level and sharing our stories, I think is really important. Um, and I just hope that each person that comes to an event throughout the week can take away something specific to them, um, whether it's a lesson in how to love their body from self-love and compassion, whether it's a lesson in how to practice mindfulness and practice breathing and taking a moment to take a break, or whether it's how to um, attack their anxiety and be able to combat anxiety attacks and how to best um, handle those things. I think, I hope that every person can find something for them and that they will be able to, con continuing after Mental Health Week, they'll be able to continue using the resources that we provide and using the resources that the counseling department is providing because um, they're doing a great job with this too. I am. Um, I would agree with that, Audrey. I'd also say that one thing that we tried to do in all of our like get ready meetings and Conley um, know about this too is like we just wanted to make sure that there's something for everybody and that it's not just the same thing like every day um, so that we have breathing exercises mindfulness things to know but also like um, sharing your stories and being vocal with that and so I really think that that's one thing we did a good job of is making sure that there are different topics and it's not all just on anxiety or depression like you know we're talking about things we don't normally talk about like body image and um you know other underground topics i guess you could say so we okay. also have four main speakers throughout the week and um i think one really important facet that we covered is that there are two men and two women speaking um, there's a lot of stigma around men's mental health, and I really pushed to um, include the men's athletics teams in this, trying to get them to reach out to their teams as well. Um, and I think that's so important. And I really hope that um, my dad pulls those guys in because I hope that they know that it's okay for them to show their emotions to us too. And um, yeah, so I hope this applies to everybody that um, anybody can hear from any person. And I think that that'll be a really good way to reach out to everybody at Belmont, regardless of who they are. Mm -hmm. With right. it being like all online too, it's even more important that everybody is more inclusive too. And so I think that we'll just have a lot of different things that we can talk about and, you know, bring up through Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So that's also a blessing in disguise with it being all online. One thing I like really loved that we did this week was we had volunteers, we had coaches, we had student athletes volunteer to speak and to like send in a video on their own mental health journeys or how they combat mental health struggles. And I had my coach, Bart Brooks, send in a video um, about feeding feeding the positive dog and that being aware of recognizing those negative thoughts that come in like, Oh, Conley, like you missed that shot. Like you shouldn't be on the floor or like, I, you know, like just like the struggles that we face and like the things that we tell ourselves that we would never say to another human being like, as I'm sure everyone says it, but I've never, I've never said it as much to myself as like when I'm playing, when I'm performing. And I think like, and I think it's so special to have coaches, especially take part in the conversation and acknowledge that that is something that student athletes like deal with almost every second of their performance is saying those things to yourself that you would never say to a teammate like you would never say to a teammate Cameron like why did you miss that putt yeah. like you would never do something like that and so my coach be surprised <laughs> right? yeah, actually, actually um but no like coach Bart has this thing where he says feed the positive dog and you have two dogs you have a negative dog you have a positive dog and every time you choose to entertain those negative thoughts 
you're feeding the negative dog and what's he going to do? He's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger while your positive dog is just going to be left without food. An awful thought to think about like feeding animals and not feeding them. <laughs> but like you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. Yeah. the idea that, hey, like quit quit investing in that negative aspect like quit quit letting it be okay to basically slap yourself in the face for missing a shot it's like striking out missing a putt like quit like hitting yourself in the face for that like instead feed the positive dog because like we said audrey like with psychology like it's a muscle you have to train it just as much as you have to train your legs and your arms, like, and you know, your body, like you have to train your brain. And I, I I just, I don't know about you guys. I just thought that was so special that we had coaches speak up for us um, and take part in mental health week, because I think it's, I just think it's really cool that it's something that's so special to them. Like it is to us. And I think, you know, signing this contract to like, I will play for you if you like, you're going to give me this college, to, like, you're going to give me this college education, I'm going to play your sport for you, and I'm going to try to perform for you, mm-hmm. and there's so much stress that comes with that, like, mm-hmm. you don't realize it when you sign that contract, mm-hmm. but when you're here, and you're like, mm-hmm. am I a bad investment, and, like, just having your own coaches say, like, hey, you're not a bad investment, you're more than this sport, um has been something that like it's meant the world to me I don't know about you guys but like I just thought that was one of the coolest parts about this week I athletics as a whole is just great in that you can go ahead Cam. I would totally agree with that Conley I think that's one of my favorite parts of the whole week has just been well like I I've been getting the videos and just seeing every single video I've gotten. And there's a lot, like I've probably gotten like six or seven people willing to talk about this to a big group of people. They just have so much passion in their voice and they want to make it known to their teammates, to their coaches, to their players, to student athletes, students in general, how important this is to them and how maybe some of these tips can just change the way you think and just change your, um, like sporting, you know, career, sporting life. Um, but I also think whenever you're talking about giving those good mental health tip, health tips, calmly, um, at the end of the day, something that always helps me is that I just have to remember that I am not my sport. And I think we talk about this a lot at Belmont, like we finding our identity, not in our sport or not in, our score is so important because once you kind of fall down that track or just fall, fall into that trap, it just, it's hard to get up. And so I think that knowing and just before you even step foot on the field, the course, the court. Yeah. <laughs> I was like the court course court. Uh, <laughs> um, I was like, what are our three? Um, just knowing that, if I shoot a hundred, if I lose by 30 points, that's okay. I'm not my sport. I'm going to learn more from my bad days than I do for my good days. And I'm going to work harder and be better next time. And I think, I don't want to give away too much for this week, but um, the people who sent in videos have really great advice that go over that. Um, so I, but I just think that that's a really important part of mental health with sports specifically. I think we go our whole lives saying, I'm a softball player. I, I'm a golf player. I don't know if you say golf player. I play golf. I'm a basketball <laughs> player. I'm a volleyball player. I'm a tennis player. And we describe ourselves as those things. Like when people ask us what we do, oh, I play softball. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's hard to take a step back from that and say, no, I'm an athletic person that chose to play softball. That's not who I am. Um, that's what I do. And I think, (laughs) uh, I think that I hope that through those videos that we got and through the resources that we're providing this week, we can push people in our athletic department to see themselves as more than their, um, stats, more than the numbers that they put up, more than the, um, honors that they get through the OVC, more than 
whether they get an OVC championship ring or not, more than the number of games they win. Um, and those things, yes, are important. And yes, that's what we work for. And of course we want those things, but that's not what is gonna give us happiness. What's gonna give us happiness is our relationship with the person next to us on the field or on the court or on the course. Yeah. Our relationships with our coaches, our relationships with other people in the athletic department like you guys. Um, and being able to foster connections outside of saying I'm a softball player and saying I'm a person that chose my softball and I choose to connect with you people um, is so valid and so important. And I hope that the things that we're giving people this week can really do that. I always would say in 10 years, we're not going to remember that score from that game. We're going to remember how we made that person feel or how that person made us feel or the connection we made. I don't remember what I shot. Oh, I don't remember what I shot two days ago, but I don't remember what I shot um, my last season, middle, the middle tournament. Like I remember the people I met and maybe if I made that impact or if they made an impact on me, like obviously it's so important for us to play good and for us to work hard and be the best we can be. But if that's not how it is one day, our, every day is different in our sports. So I think that's really important to remember. I'm so glad at Belmont we have people like you guys. Uh, and I know your teammates are so lucky to have you guys. Um, something Coach Bart says is, what is going to comfort you after a bat practice? Is it going to be like the hoodie you got this year for from you know, the, the team, the school, is it going to be that or is it going to be your teammates? Yeah. Um, and I, that's something I've, I really like come to understand is like, I go home to my sisters, like my sisters, I mean, teammates now, like I go home to them and like, that's what I get to be around. And, you know, they don't care if I made a lot of threes in practice today like, obviously, they want me to perform my best, but, like, are they going to, like, treat me differently because I didn't hit an extra three at the end of practice? Like, no. Like, yeah. and I think as a student athlete, it's hard to, like, realize that. But I love what you guys said. Like, we're athletic girls that chose to play mm -hmm. and, you know, have this opportunity here to perform. And it's, like, a blessing. Like, we get to play softball we get to play golf we get to play basketball like those are those are things we get to do it's not things we have to do and um I don't I just I can't thank you guys enough for being so open about this and being such leaders in this and I think that Belmont's really lucky to have you guys and I know I know your teammates are lucky to have y'all um but I can't thank y'all enough for all the work y'all put into this week and just Belmont in general. Uh, yeah, y'all got, you guys are great. And um, I wish you guys the best in your college careers and endeavors. Thank you so much, Conley. You're incredible too. Your teammates <laughs> are so lucky to have you. And like you said, you see us all around. Oh, heck, we see you all around too. So thank you so much for all you're putting into and Christian and Daniel and you guys' work as well. Thank you guys so much for everything that you do for us. Um, we appreciate you all so much. Absolutely, I agree. Thank you. I know Christian and that office, is, those jobs are some of the most important ones right now with COVID. So you guys have really stepped to the plate and made it like so awesome for all of us, like you always do. And Conley, from the moment I saw you in that room, that interpersonal room right across the road, or not road, the road, the classroom, I was like, I'm her biggest fan. Aww. So I'm so happy that we're here on your first podcast. Thank you so much. It was really an honor and it's gonna be a really great, or it's gonna be a really great week. Yes, thank y'all so much. Well, thank y'all so much for being here for our first ever Belmont Bruins podcast. I'm Conley Chin, and I'll see you guys next time.